perhaps a fear behind the question being asked to begin with. And the fear or the misconception behind this question are two. One, that Muslims in Islam have an agenda to force our faith by force on other people. And then two, there's, there's a historical precedent behind this question because in 2006 in Palestine, there were free elections. Former President Jimmy Carter oversaw the elections and he saw the elections were fair and honest. And we all know who won the 2006 elections in Palestine. How many of you don't know who won the 2006 election in Palestine? Okay, okay, three. Hamas won the election, which is considered by our government to be, um, has been designated by our government as a terrorist organization, and moreover, uh, a threat to uh, the, the state of Israel. Therefore, uh, some, of, some people in our country, we like democracy if the people vote for the people that we want them to vote for then they don't, want, they don't like democracy if they vote for other people that they don't vote for. So the answer that I have been given is a positive, affirmative answer regarding this. The first part of it is that it is a human aspiration of all people to want to be free, to have freedom of expression. This is the first part that, that, that we say. This is one of our talking points. Why not, it's not just uh, public relations nonsense. This is true, and this is something that appeals to Americans. All people respect and want to be free, to have freedom of expression, to have freedom of governance, to have freedom of religion, to have freedom of speech. And these are actually Islamic principles. And I can break them down to you later in the Quran and in the Hadith that these are actually Islamic principles. So. We believe that all human beings have the human aspiration to want to be free and that all people have the right to self-determination. In your, and then another question is, and regarding your concerns that if so-called Islamists were to take over the government in, in these countries, our exercise as a democracy in America was not a neat process. And I go down the line of giving historical examples. So we have to remind the American people about our history because it seems like that we have, as Americans sometimes, amnesia. We had independence and then we had slavery for almost 100 years in, in this country. We made treaties with Native Americans and broke them and killed them. We had the internment of Japanese Americans. It took almost 150 years of this country being established before women and people of color had the freedom of exercise to vote. So establishing democracy in America was not a neat and clean process, and we should, we should allow other people the right to express themselves and go through the same process just as we did in the United States of America. That, and these are suggested answers, by the way, but these are our talking points. The, I'm trying to give you logical answers that are truthful, and at the same time, that Americans can understand or can stick to, that they can connect to. Okay, and now here we'll get into this more in terms of understanding the American psyche. Okay, the second one relates to something contemporary. How have you heard about the, uh, the ballot initiative that passed in early November in Oklahoma called the anti-Sharia proposal. Okay, you all, most of us have heard of that. Okay, CARE, we ended up going to court and challenging that ballot initiative that was passed that would, would make Sharia uh, illegal in the state of Oklahoma, and we won. We won the case, alhamdulillah, we won. It was a major victory for the uh, for the Muslim community, and we know that the uh, no religious law, uh, save your question. No, write it down, save your question. We know that no, uh, no explicit religious law for any country is used in regards to sentencing and punishment in our country anyway. 
But the question came behind that situation, and even beforehand, going back to Sharia. And that, uh, that question or that statement is that Muslims have the goal, or do you as Muslims have the goal of supplanting or abolishing to try to erode the Constitution of the United States of America to impose Sharia upon the American society? I've been asked this question uh, by people in person as well as on talk radio. Again, do American Muslims have an agenda to supplant the United States Constitution to establish Sharia? And they define Sharia as Islamic law. Let me get a poll real quick. Does Sharia mean Islamic law? However you say Sharia means Islamic law. One. How are you, well, I should say how many of you are too shy to even raise your hands. <laughs> okay. Uh, sharia does not mean Islamic law. That is not the proper definition for the term Sharia. So let me backtrack before I answer the question. Uh, the literal meaning of Sharia, if you go back to the, uh, like the books of Islam Arab, it's like a, it's a, it's a tariqa, or it's a path towards a watering hole. This is what the term Sharia means. Dr. Tariq Ramadan, may Allah preserve him, he defines Sharia as a path towards faithfulness. Many of the scholars say that Sharia is just a goal or an objective of how human beings work to conform their lives towards the pleasure of the Almighty, the Creator God. This is what Sharia. So Sharia has certain objectives, like what's called maqasid. Maqasid al-Sharia, that basically the scholars say there are five objectives of Sharia. And fiqh, or Islamic jurisprudence, is the way of trying to uh, meet those goals. So fiqh is kind of like a vehicle to take you down the road of Sharia for, for the simplification purposes. So the objectives of Islamic law, or I should say Islamic law, the objectives of Sharia are the preservation of life. The preservation of ad din of we can say religion. The preservation of intellectual property or al aql Okay? The preservation of al mal or the, the, the ability that for people to have economic dignity and property rights. And an nas or posterity. To have the, the right to protect and to leave something for your offspring. These are basically the five objectives of Sharia. And these five objectives of the Sharia can be found more or less in the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution. These five objectives basically can be found in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution of the United States of America. These objectives. Now, I was mentioning there's different schools of jurisprudence. There is no one book or there is no one unified uh, uh, book where you can just go to and say, this is Sharia. It doesn't exist. So now, going to the questioning, uh, if, if people say this, uh, or ask us this question, we first define what Islam is. And I say, Islam respects freedom of choice and freedom of expression in religion or ideology of all human beings, and that Islam, uh, does, uh, Islam does not seek to impose itself upon people who are not Muslim. So I first, before I start with the, with the negative, I first start off with the positive. Um, now, historical examples. You can give historical examples. Muslims ruled the Iberian Peninsula or Spain and Portugal for approximately seven centuries, and Jews and Christians practiced their religion freely, and they had their own judges to settle to sell civil disputes. Then I say, if it were the goal of Muslims and Islam to force people to become Muslims, then 
How is it that India is majority Hindu today when Muslims governed India as a